Hi, I'm Martin from Multipipe, and today I want to talk a little bit about underfloor heating design and underfloor heating floor constructions. Now there are certain ingredients that you need realistically when you're putting an underfloor heating system together. Uh, the floor construction is quite critical to understand and how that works, along with the water temperature requirement to pass through those underfloor heating circuits. Moving forward then to the type of floor covering you're thinking about using right at the end. And different floor constructions will behave differently and realistically give you better performance. So if we're looking at uh, new build applications, generally look at concrete screed floor, floor constructions where we're burying our pipe in a what we often call a thermal mass, a concrete screed. That concrete screed tends to suck the heat out of the pipes and absorbs that heat far more efficiently than some other floor constructions that you'll come across. And when you can look at floor constructions that are screed, then you'll tend to get a much better performing underfloor heating systems. And designs can be run then as low as water temperatures, breathe lot, as low as 30 degrees C by changing the pipe spacings, reducing those spacings down and uh, make sure you're capturing your pipes in that concrete screed. Now, if we're looking at joisted floors, it's very unusual in the UK to see concrete screeded floors on the, on the first or above or on joist, joisted floors. So aluminium spreader plates are often used on first and uh, floors and above. And those spreader plates react differently. You're not heating a thermal mass within the floor. And because of that result, you'll need a higher water temperature flowing through those circuits to achieve a reasonable output to heat your property. What we never want to do is mix floor constructions from the same manifold because we have a typically a, a water temperature control that may be attached to that manifold and that will be determined what heat is passed through those circuits. And because screed acts differently to other floor constructions, then it's all, it's all about getting the right water temperature flowing through the circuits for the right floor construction to give the right output. Now with the water temperature flowing through uh, these floor constructions, we're looking to achieve ideally about a 29 degrees C floor surface temperature. And we work on a rule of thumb about nine degrees difference from the air. So if we set the air to 20, we'll be looking for an ideal floor surface temperature of around about 29 degrees. And we'll see shortly how floor surfaces can have a big influence on the output given from the underfloor heating and what, how it room, uh, warms your floor. Now on a traditional screeded floor here, pipes will be normally spaced at around about 200 mil centers. And that's typical on a relevant design. 200 mil centers for your pipe work on your screed that's sitting on top of your insulation. And again, on a plated system, you'll be also looking about 200 mil centers. But the big difference is the water temperature on this system will be lower than what will be required on this plated system here. So you've installed this underfloor heating system, but one thing we can't sometimes influence is what the customer decides to put on the floor surface. And the floor covering has a dramatic effect on that performance. And if we look at some basic floor coverings here, here then, we've got slate, stone and tile, often called a hard floor covering. We've got carpet and finally timber. On all of those three different coverings, we'll have a different thermal resistance that will affect the output of the underfloor heating. If we look at an ideal scenario, hard floors, state, slate, stone and tile have almost a zero resistance. We'll let that heat straight through and give you a better output where carpet and timber are both insulators. So if we look at carpet, if your customer chooses carpet as their floor covering, we're looking at TOG ratings, maximum one TOG underlay, 1.5 TOG carpet. Try not to exceed those figures, otherwise the output will be greatly affected. Now timber floors, you can have anything from a traditional laminate type floor to an engineered board to solid pieces of timber. But certain floor coverings like timber will have maximum permissible floor surface temperatures, often 27 degrees. So always check then with the manufacturer of the floor covering if there's any limitations when working with underfloor heating. And there's a potential then that well, you may need to fit a floor sensor to protect that floor. Now the big influence on floor coverings is, is how that system performs. So to allow Multipipe to do a quality design for you, we would really like to know what those floor coverings are at the design stage. And if you let us know what those floor coverings are, we can then look at pipe spacings, etc., in the installation and work out which is the best water temperature control and different floor construction to associate with that particular uh, application. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like us. Take care, have a good day.